Hello, you're watching Studio Ken. Make sure you don't miss any episode of Studio Ken by subscribing to the YouTube channel. To subscribe, search for Studio Ken on YouTube, click subscribe on the bottom right of your screen and set a reminder. You can also watch Studio Ken on Diamond TV on Wednesday at 18.30 and on Saturday at 19 hours. Studio Ken, the home of Kennedy Gondway on YouTube. The name Rodan Jovu has recently hit national and international headlines. Little, however, is known about Rodan. Her rise to national stardom is credited to the work on the track. She has posted new national records, subsequently qualifying to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which have been delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A snippet of Rodan is that of a sprinter seeking to break barriers. Other than the 1996 Olympic medalist Samuel Matete, no Zambian athlete has made any other impact at this stage. Well, joining me on Studio Ken today is Rhoda herself, alongside 200 meters African champion Sidney Siame and coach Douglas Kalembo. The two athletes are preparing for the African Championships. They are also in camp for the Olympic Games that are scheduled to take place in Tokyo in July. Hey, I'm Fashion Sakara Jr., Zambia and Glasgow Rangers FC striker. You are on Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe. Sydney, Roda, Coach Douglas, welcome to Studio Ken. Thank you for having us. Ladies, more often than not, always go first. So I'll start with you, Roda. Very little is known about you in terms of athletics. What is it that people should be knowing? Okay. Rhoda, um, Rhoda, she's one of the fastest runners in Zambia. I'm the national record holder in both events, 100 and 200. And uh, I'm also ranked as number three in, the, in Africa. And uh, in 100 meters, I think I'm also ranked number two in Africa as at now, the way it stands. What are some of the medals that you've won in your young career? In my young career, I've, I've won a lot of medals in different events, but I feel like the major ones, it's the one I won last year in uh, Kenya, where I, where I participated in, um, where I participated in uh, Intercontinental Tour, and I feel that medal really opened a lot of doors for me. What medal was that? It was bronze. Is athletics for you a full-time job, or it's one of those things that you just do as a past, uh, pastime? Honestly, I feel like, I feel athletics, it's a full-time job for me because uh, I don't do anything beside athletics, so I think it's a full-time job for me. What satisfaction do you draw from it? Uh, it makes me feel so confident within myself, and I've seen it, it's bettering my life as at now, as it stands. Who would you say has inspired you thus far in your journey? My coach, Douglas Karembo. Is it he because he's sitting right next no, to No, 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 no. <laughs> Honestly, he has uh, inspired me in so many ways, the way he do, a lot of things and the way he carries himself that makes me to be so confident and carry myself in a better way because i've been around him and i've seen a good person out of him when you talk about athletics in zambia generally speaking including men and female the last time that zambia won a medal at the olympics which you are preparing for was in 1996 samuel matete what makes you think you can succeed where others have failed I feel like uh, it comes in with discipline and patience and uh, trusting the process. I feel like I'll be able to make it big because looking at the way, the way they used to train way back and a lot of things have changed in Zambia. We, are, we have infrastructures, we have better coaches like Kalembo who is, a, who is an international athlete. Way back they never had uh, such coaches but as of now we are given a privilege that uh, we have a coach like him, and uh, I feel like I have to utilize him. I have to, use, I have to utilize that as a great opportunity that I have to make sure that I bring out the best in the things that have been given. Other than not having proper infrastructure, I mean, from 1996 up to now, you are hoping to win a medal. That's a very long time. You're not even born. Other than infrastructure, what do you think the missing link has been? I think the sponsorship mainly, it has been missing out, but I'm so grateful that, that as now the way it stands, I have national, national service, which really gives me support. PP program, which is podium performance, which is being supported by 
the national, which is being supported by the government, and NOCZ, like I've mentioned, uh, winning my gold medal la last year, it really opened doors where I was even given a scholarship by NOCZ. Coach, what does it take to train a medal winning athlete? Scientifically, it takes 10 years. That is a proven. Scientifically, it takes 10 years to, to make a world champion or a med, uh, Olympic champion. It takes 10 years. And the, that's what it takes. And again, it takes a lot of things. It takes a good coach. That's number one. You have to have a good coach, you know. Uh, secondly, you have to have a, a, a fracture. I mean, it's, uh, uh, the environment has to be right, you know. Uh, the government has to be supportive and the federation itself and all these uh, um, um, partners to come together and make sure that the, the athletes are taken care of. So it's a lot of, it's a process, it's a lot of things which makes it become a guy. But scientifically it takes 10 years. But for, for, for Zambia, I mean, I think uh, Zambia Amateur Athletics, we have uh, uh, done a lot of things, you know, try to plan. If every four years we plan that, okay, how are we going to do in four years' time? What is we are missing? So we found, and we go back to the drawing board and find out exactly what we need to do. And since I came back, we have been doing that. And that's what you can see the results of Sidin Siame, Rodan Jovu, we had Kabange Mupopo, you know, those athletes who have been within from 2013 to now. You can see we are the African champion woman, which is uh, Mupopo, Africa champion. Or African Games champion and the, the uh, uh, world champion finalist. You can imagine she did all that within a period of time. Some critics of the athletics body may point out to the fact that it's taken too long. You are talking about 10 years. The current uh, president of the Athletics Association has been there for more than 20 years yes. and you just came in much, much later. How, how do you respond to that? Yes, you can imagine uh, Mr. Mponda has been there for 22 years. Now, what I just mentioned earlier on, that it takes 10 years to develop a, cha a champion. So he has been there two decades, which is 10 years he has to produce an, an athlete. So when people think, talking about it, he has been there too long. No, he hasn't been there too long, because it takes 10 years. Samuel Majeta won a medal, he was in America. It took him 10 years in America, where there's everything. It took him 10 years to do that, but we are in Africa. You can imagine. So, Miss Ampona has never been there too long because it takes 10 years to do for an athlete. So, it's simple and straightforward. Sitting with you are two athletes that you are preparing for the African Championships, and then later on in July, you go to the Olympics. When you look at them, do you think you've got award winning athletes? Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, if, if I, I'll start with Sidin Siam. If you imagine Sidin Siam, I discovered since I'm in 2013. In 2014, he won a, a medal at the Youth Olympics. That is the biggest uh, event ever somebody can be able to win a medal. And there was America, there was these big, uh, big countries there, which they have a very good system in their country, youth, uh, junior and everything. But here, I mean, get there and won uh, uh, a medal. You can see. That means the, 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 the like the other one, even I, I don't know what the other said. The, the things have changed. The way the coaches did this some time back and uh, the scientific uh, way of training, it has changed a lot. And Zambia is one of those countries who have been bound, bound on to go and do um, and uh, uh, empower coaches to understand the science what it takes in science for an athlete to develop. All these things, is, we have been doing all these things. That would have helped us to build. So these two guys here, I really believe that if everything goes well, and I, I want to say thank you to the government, yeah, it's coming big. The federations itself has come big, and the National Sports Council, uh, National Olympic Committee, they have come big. And right now they are on IOC scholarship, which, I mean, they give them enough money for them to look after themselves and to train and to pay a coach. So it, it's just a lot of money which is, the world has invested in them. So definitely they have a shot in the Olympics if all things is equal. Sydney, 
Zambia and the world remembers you from 2014. I think that's a time that you reached your peak at um, youth level. In 2014, you won a gold at the Youth Olympics in China in 100 meters with a time of uh, 10.54 seconds. What have you been up to from that time? Uh, interesting. I've been up uh, in, uh, in so many things because uh, the 2014 gold, it was a stepping stone for me because that was the beginning of major things to, to come. Because I started in 2014 and it was my first year competing seriously in athletics and I was able to win that gold. So it gave me courage and uh, it pushed me forward to, to, to do greater things. So uh, I went ahead in 2015 and win a bronze in, at, a, at a junior category Africa, Africa Championship. It was in Ethiopia. I managed to, to, to come back with, with a bronze medal, which is huge again because it's, not, it's never easy to compete in. Uh, at that level, whereas you are in just in athletics in two years, because it takes so many years for you to start winning medals, just like the coach mentioned earlier. I managed to come back with it. I went ahead in 2017. At, uh, in 2016, at uh, Africa Senior in Durban, I managed to reach in the finals, whereas I was a junior. So greater things started happening. What would you say has been the secret behind your success? Some of those things or achievements that you've scored at a tender age are not easy to come by. Yeah, um, of course, to start with, uh, I'm a natural athlete. I'm just talented. I was born with it. And uh, I'm privileged to have uh, a coach who's experienced, who's been there, who knows what it takes for one to win a medal. Who knows what it takes for an athlete to go and perform at that level. So uh, that's my secret. What does it take then for an athlete to win a medal? Of course, consistent uh, discipline and uh, focusing, trust in the process. Uh, it's more like, it's just like education. You just need to study for you to, to pass. Yeah. So <laughs> you need to follow all those things for you to, to make it. So I've been following whatever the coach is telling me. Uh, I've been trusting the process. Uh, I've been doing all those things, all those small, small things, putting, it, putting them together. It helped me to, to, to achieve. And here, 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 here I am today, I'm still. So give me an idea of what happens on an everyday basis. Right now, you are preparing for the African Championships and then later on the Olympics. Yes. On an everyday, typical day of you preparing, what goes on in your mind? What kind of training regimes are you put through? Okay, ah, we, we, we athletes. I can just say, uh, we live a boring life. Is it? <laughs> yeah. How so, yeah, it's a boring life, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that we don't do so many things because most of the time we think about athletics. How am I going to improve? Whatever we do, we involve, it's just athletics. You don't see me going, moving up and down, going to, to the market. From there, I go to shower, and then I go to, today is Saturday. Would someone be right to say athletes are lazy, based on what you're explaining? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, they can, they can describe it in such a way, because we don't do so many things. Most of the time, we, we just sit in one place, relax, we do things, same things over and over. It's just training. After training, you, you hit before, 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 before you, 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 you drain your energy. You have to hit back so that you, you gain back your energy, the energy that you spend during training. After hitting, you start relaxing. You, you, you plan for the next, for the next day again. Because okay. we, don't, we don't do so many things, just like I said. We just stay in one place, think about athletics, prepare and think about where you are missing it, and now you are going to improve. Mm -hmm. That's what we do in the daily process. So that's why I'm saying athletics is, we live a boring, a very boring life. But then, what does it take for you to beat your personal best time? You are currently at uh, 20.16 in uh, uh, 200 meters, and then 10.06 in 100 meters. What does it take for you to improve from your previous record? Yeah, it takes uh, seriousness and uh, trust in the process. And again, there's one thing that you need to, to understand. 
in athletics, the more you are in athletics, the more you, you gain experience and the more you improve. So you don't have to rush to say, uh, I need to, to hit this time, what else you are still raining? Because you need to learn how to, to train, to compete, how to keep yourself, and you need to learn how to, to be consistent. So all those processes, you need to, to follow them. So it takes years for you to, to, to beat the, the, the time that, that you want. Sometimes you can be consistent for, 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 for a long time. Maybe f you can continue maybe in the same time with uh, three seasons. You can continue like that, but it would eventually drop as you go on. What you need to, to follow is just the kind of training the coach is giving because it's the one who drives you, is the one who knows the program. Is the, in athletics, we have a driver who is a coach. You, are, you just have to follow that driver, whatever is telling you, because it's the one who has studied you, is the one who knows what it takes for you to improve. So that's what you need to follow for you to, to, to drop your times and to improve. And what pressure comes with being a 200 meters African champion? You are currently reigning in that category. Of course, it comes with a lot of pressure because uh, it's never easy. We've got so many people who are running fast at, at the moment. But again, the most important thing is just knowing how to, to control that pressure, especially when we are at a major championship. Because in athletics, we have ups and downs. At the moment, maybe you can be running a slow time, and there's this other person who's running fast times. But when we reach at the championship, you are the, you are the African king. You won, you won that thing. <laughs> so do you consider yourself as a king yeah, in 200 meters? Yeah, you won that thing. And then you are trying to defend it. And there are other people that, that, that are running faster than you. And then you are at, at, at that championship. So all you need to do is just remain calm, control pressure, and do what you can do. In athletics, once you involve pressure, you can't do anything. Roda. Before this interview, I called you so many times. Last week you told me, please, my mind is focused on a competition on Saturday. I don't even want to take any interviews. What goes on in your mind when you are preparing? Honestly, I think focusing is the main key and uh, the determination that you need for yourself. I think it's just a zone which you just need uh, to stay focused and to feel it just by yourself. Do you get paid for the competitions that you take part in? We just get allowances, like where I'm working from. I'm an employed personnel, I'm under ZNS, I'm a civilian staff. I get paid monthly, and when I'm running such competition, I only get allowances. Yeah, um, okay, in athletics, uh, we've got uh, different, different, different privileges. There My is, privilege. Sorry, I have to cut in. The reason I ask is um, it's difficult to motivate a youngster on the street to take up athletics because what preoccupies or what occupies many people's minds is this thing that I'm going to get involved in. Is it going to bring food to the table? Yeah. yeah. So before coach will come in, um, how do you convince someone to take up athletics as their career? Yeah, very easy to convince someone because they can take an example from me. Everything that I have is through athletics. I started running in uh, to early, early, late, late 2013, and I continued. Way back then, it's athletics I, I was doing, and I, will never pay, I never paid any single pen during my high school period when I was at school. So I can say athletics paid for my school fees. After that, uh, I won in 2014, I won the Olympic medal, and I got a, a Olympic solidarity scholarship. That's paying me. So that money has helped me to, to reach where I am today. And whatever I have today is through athletics. And the things that I have, is, uh, is, is, they are not small things. Uh, I'm, I'm able to, to feed myself. I have my own things where, that I can, I can point at. And, and what um, things are those? I got, I got employment through athletics. So, so many things to mention. What things? What things do you <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, to I don't want to, 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 to disclose. Yeah. So, so, Uncle Ken, 
uh, I mean, I want to lead you. I mean, I, I won't mention figures, but I'll tell you what, he, what goes on in athletics. Right now, Sydney is signed by Nike. I mean, I think he's the only athlete in this country who is signed by Nike. This is big, global Nike. Not small Nike in South Africa, no. Global Nike. And they pay him per year. I won't mention the figure. And he doesn't want to mention too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention the figure. So he get paid good money, which is he can sustain him for a long time. And again, he's the youngest chief inspector in the police. You can imagine that is because of athletics, not because of anything else. It's because of the athletics. He has I.O. scholarship, which I won't even mention again the figure, because they might be following in some. <laughs> then he gets that money again. Then he's only. Um, um, on the AADC uh, 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 scholarship, where also is assisted in so many things. So, and again, when Sydney goes to, uh, to run in Europe, each learning, Sydney cannot just go and run. He has to be paid. So they invite him. Oh, we need Sydney, and we have to tell them how much they should pay him. You know? What is the smallest amount that you've told them uh, that they should pay him? I mean, it may be. Ah, again? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the highest. At least you can uh, okay. dispose I, I mean, I would say maybe, you know, a thousand euro. Oh, yes. Pay, pay race. Competition. Yes. You know, they paid him for, for air ticket. They paid for his accommodation, transport to the airport, everything. Hmm. He, he, he get paid for those things. Okay. So you can imagine. So a person out there who doesn't understand that athletics, I, you can make a living. I'll give you an example. In Kenya, the best businessmen in Kenya are athletes who have got big hotels, got transport, transport business. Right now, Sydney has employed the three people work for him. He has got transport business, Sydney. He has got three to four employees. You see? So he has bought his own house at the age he is. Somebody having a house at this age, me, Adam, I'm own house at the age 41. But him is having a house at the age of 24. Sydney, can you confirm everything that the coach Yes, said? yes. <laughs> it's true. It's true. yes. <laughs> so now you can imagine, Roda also, right now Roda is on IOS scholarship. He get paid on that. Roda, when he goes to any competition right now, she get paid. So we have to ask for the fee. She cannot just go out there and run. She has, got, she has to get paid. Then she is employed. I mean, she doesn't go and work there. Their employers, Zambia National Service, thank you for them. They pay her every month. And again, when Rhoda goes outside Zambia, they give her allowances. You can imagine, if she put this money together, I don't think there's a degree which can pay them like that much. Okay. Believe me on this one. You guys, with all that the coach is explaining, which you are confirming, I would assume that there are a lot of distractions, earthly pleasures, things that come your way, beautiful girls, guys uh, chasing after you. How do you repel them? I'll start with you. I feel, of, I should rather say, the determination and the focus on the things that I want to achieve. They are my many drive and my many goals that I have. The goals that I have, that I don't have to divert from them until I pursue what I really want to achieve. Those are the things that have been helping me. Okay. You married? No, yet. Boyfriend? Nothing. Married? Yeah. Okay. Kids? Not yet. Okay. So, what is it that you've set for yourselves? I'll start with you, Sydney. What is it that you've set for yourself as the biggest goal that you want to achieve? Uh, for me, I've set uh, a very, very big target, which of becoming a world champion, and uh, at least the world number one and an Olympic champion, of course. So that's a, that's a major target for me, because I started when uh, I was here, and I was, it was my long, long, long time desire to become a world champion and an Olympic champion. That's a target that I've set. That target that you've set for yourself is easier said than done, because your categories are dominated by runners from Jamaica, America, and, and all that. For instance, in 2009, I think, when uh, Usain Bolt uh, set the record for the 100 meters, he posted uh, around nine seconds. That's not exactly easy for you to beat. And you're going to have that. You might have retired, but you're going to have a lot of such competition. How do you hope to achieve that? Uh, I have a long time. I have a, a long period for me to. I'm, I'm still in, in athletics. I just need to take time and uh, 
do whatever it takes and do everything for me to, to reach that target. Of course, it's, it's, it's not easy to, 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 to beat that target, but I know for sure it's, uh, it, would, it, it can eventually come if, if I just follow the process and continue training, remain focused and do whatever it takes. So uh, I'll do that in future, but I can just work on my target of becoming a, a world champion. Doesn't mean becoming a world champion, you have to break that record, no. There have been world champions who have never even come close to that time. Uh, and Rhoda, what, what are your ambitions? What do you say uh, when you achieve that, you'll be the happiest person? I feel being the nation, uh, I feel to become a world champion, then I'll be able to say that I've accomplished my goal or to, to break African records, rather to say in 100 and 200. I feel I'll be able to say that I can even pack my, my spikes. I can retire from there. Coach. Yes. You are training these guys for the African Championships. What have you seen in them? Are they capable of winning at both events? This is what I call five C's. Number, well, number one C is communication, how I communicate with them. Number two, is, number two C is how they control themselves without my, without my presence. Can, they, can she able to control herself? Say, oh, I don't have to drink, I don't have to go out, I don't have to... So that's number two. Number three, does she have confidence? Yes, she has that. Three, confidence. How much confidence she has? Then four, how much concentration, concentration she has? What she wants? What is her concentration? That's what I count. That's four C. Last C, the commitment. How much commitment is she in that? So for me, these two have got this C's, five C's. They have really mastered them, five C's. Because whether I'm not there, Rhoda will want to disappear and go and drink, or she do other things which she's not supposed to do. Sydney has to have her own control, whether, whether I'm there or not. And the commitment, are they going to come on time in training? These guys that are there on time, on time. They will follow my instruction to the teeth. So those are the things I look at. Five C's. Even in human beings, if you, Mr. Kenny, wanted to know somebody better, just give them the five C's and, where, and measure them in those five C's. Are they committed? Your work, are they committed? Do they come on time? Can they control situation when it's bad situation? They have gone through some situation where, oh my God, they cannot, but they were able to come out of it. Right now, we're having a problem where people, oh, city is not running good, oh, city is not running. But is he able to control that situation when people, they say, no, he can't do anything. And we have been there. And every year, city has run its personal best. Every year. Sydney has come out with best on best every year when we go to Europe. And he has been consistent every year. Last year, the last time we were in Europe, he, 20, he went with 2029. He came back with 2016. Rhoda, she has been running. Every time she steps on track, she ran her personal best and national record. These two guys, they owed 100 meters national record order, 200 meters record order, 100 meters record order. So both of them, they hold these national record orders. They are national record orders and the African champions and it's this you can see, they are ranked among the 20 best in the world. So that's what I really believe, because they have master five Cs. Rhoda, lastly, what should people expect in Nigeria for the African Championship and then later on the Olympics? I feel people should expect better performance from me, because I'm going for the medal. I'm, I'm not settling for anything less uh, than gold medal. Sydney. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I'm going there with a the title. Uh, with the title, which is the 200 meter African champion. So people are expecting me to, to, to defend it. And of course, I'm expecting myself to defend it. So I'm going there to defend my title. Yeah. Coach Rhoda Sini, thank you very, very much for being on Studio Ken. No, you're thank welcome. you. You're welcome. Hey, I'm Fashion Sakara Jr., Zambia and Glasgow Rangers FC striker. You're on Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe.